Alright, it says go live at the minute. Nah. Alright, it looks like we're live. Um, welcome to TikTok Live. Okay, I guess we're, uh, we're I guess we're live, so let's see. Alright, well we're just gonna get straight to it. Alright, first and foremost, we're gonna give all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechar Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect pushing this word in truth and sincerity. All right, to the Israelite foreigners scattered throughout the four corners of the earth who may look like the heathen nations, and to the very few sisters that listen and learn to you, Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Yasharala. I'm with the brother Shaman. All right, we're with, uh, we're with Great Millstone Chicago. All right, and um, on my channel, what I've been posting a lot lately is uh, the chariots of the Lord. All right, because um, hey, even the um, your uh, your government is um, letting it be known that hey, there is un unidentified flying objects. All right, they did a release saying there's about what like 144 videos of uh, which they got more. You know, there's people. Um, who said there's more videos than that, better quality, etc., of unexplained, what do they call it, UAPs, all right, unidentified aerial phenomenon, okay, but, um, hey, the Lord is showing himself, all right, he's, he's, he's showing the, uh, the chariots, which people call UFOs today, which we know them as the chariots of God, you know, he's showing us the chariots. He's building up our faith more, letting us know that he's getting ready to send his son to come and redeem his chosen. All right. Now, um, again, I've been posting a lot of chariot videos on the channel and a lot of people just don't understand what, what a chariot of God is or they have a misunderstanding of what we're talking about. All right. So we're going to we're going to go into uh, some some scriptures and. Um, Lord willing, it may be edifying. You got something you want to start off with? Or we can hit that X1. And uh, verse 9. Uh, this is Acts 1 and 9. It says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Right, so this is when um, we we call the Son of God Yahweh Shai. All right, we call him by his Hebrew name. When you read Acts of the, I believe it's the 26th chapter when he spoke to, to Paul, which at that time his name was Saul, he spoke to him in the Hebrew tongue and he told him his name, okay? So we don't, we don't say Jesus because there was no letter J, all right? Even invented, they weren't speaking English. We call him by his true name, which is Yahweh Shai. All right, so this is when Yahweh Shai got taken up into the heavens. He got taken up into a, it said a cloud, right? Huh. All right. So then people would think, oh, he's, he got taken up in a, a, a cloud. Like he's like Goku from Dragon Ball Z on the, on the flying Nimbus. No, wasn't talking about that. All right. The cloud was talking about um, um, a, a vehicle, a chariot. All right. Which we're going to um, uh, break that down in this scripture. Let me pull it up. Give me a second. As a matter of fact, keep on reading on that. There's some more in there. Yeah. It's in verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, <clears throat> as he <clears throat> excuse me, as he went up, beheld two men stood by them in white apparel. Which were angels. Go ahead. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Right. So the same way our, our Lord and Savior, he went up into the cloud, which is the chariot, which we're going to get the scripture to uh, explain that. He's coming back the same way. So they, they just had a video not too long ago um, that was talking about what, oh, Jesus, or the, a dude was like levitating it. You seen that? Or the dude was levitating? No, that's not, that's not so-called Jesus because it said he's going to come back the same way he came. All right, and we're just going to ignore, uh, yeah, we GMS, we're going to ignore these, these scoffers on the comment board because, you know, if you don't believe, hey, it's fine. You don't have to believe, all right? We're, we ain't really here for the non-believers. We're here for the believers, right. all right? So it don't matter what you got to say, but we're going to keep it moving. So 
Now we're going to prove that the, the clouds represents uh, the chariots. This is Psalms 104 and uh, verse 3. All right, it says, Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, mm -hmm. who walketh upon the winds, uh, the wing, the wings of the wind. All right, so here in, in, in the book of Psalms, it's comparing the cloud to God's what? Chariot, okay? And what is a chariot? All right, in the ancient time, a chariot was a vehicle, right? You got chariots today. They're called cars, SUVs, truck. It's a, it's a, a form of transportation. And that's the way how the Heavenly Father, all right, set up for his angels to go about the earth, you know? Um, when he, uh, what's that, Exodus, the 20th chapter? He came down on the uh, on that what was it like a, a cloud and it covered up the Mount Sinai and it uh, burned it up and everybody was like oh that was it that was a so called UFO it was a chariot all right um what you got you got something on yeah this is uh, Exodus thirteen and twenty one mm -hmm. it said the Lord went before them this is our people in uh, the wilderness and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Yep. So there you go, man. The Lord was in the, the uh, pillar, uh, uh, he was in the cloud. All right, just a quick precept for that, 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Right? And that cloud was again was a chariot. Yep. Right? So called UFO. Right. And then it said a, a fire at night, right? When you see these chariots at night, they glow. They look like they look like they're on fire. You know, sometimes it's a it's a amber color. Uh sometimes it's like a bright white, a, a bright white light. Alright, so there you go, okay? And that was with them until they entered to the land, you know? That was uh, um, pretty much what we will call the fathership, all right? That's they had the fathership that was hovering over them. Oh, you already read that, Psalm 104? Yeah, I read that one already. You read verse 4? Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't touch on it. Go ahead, you can read verse 4. Mm -hmm. Psalm 104, 4. Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers of flame and fire. So... There you go, man. The Lord has angels around him, which is a flame of fire. And then those chariots as well are also a flame of fire. Yeah. God, it's energy, spirits, energy. God. So, um, so now that we read Acts, the first chapter, which says the, our Lord and Savior, our Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, again, because there was no letter J back in his time, he went into a cloud. He read in Psalms that the cloud... All right, he make it the clouds his chariot, which is a vehicle, which you know people that don't understand it, they're gonna call it a UFO because it's unidentified to it's unidentified to them. But to us, we know what it is. It's the chariot of the Lord. So here in uh, Revelations, the first chapter, we're gonna go to verse seven. It says, "Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him." And right, you know, um, I've been reading. Uh, I've been trying to keep up with the comments because there's a, a whole bunch of them. People are saying, oh, that's not Jesus. You know, every eye shall see him. Nobody said it was uh, Jesus. You know, nobody said that that was the return of the Lord in those videos. We're just showing that the Lord is making himself present. He's, he's making himself known now. All right. Because we're getting that much closer to the end. All right. And the Lord showed the chariots even in the time of uh, Elijah and Elisha, which we're going to get that. Okay. Um, but we're going to continue in here. It says, every eye shall see him and they also, which pierced him. So what's that talking about? They also, which pierced him. So you're telling me there's 2000 plus year old Roman centurions walking around him. Cause those are the ones who pierced him. All right. With the understanding that the scripture is going into reincarnation, which that's a whole nother topic, which we, we can cover some other time. All right, because that, that's going to go over a lot of people's heads. But we're going to stick to the topic. It says, and all uh, kindreds and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. So all the nations are going to be wailing. A wailing is a bitter, 
a, a cry. Why? Because he's coming back to judge this place. He's not coming back, like we always say, to give high fives, surfing down a, a cloud, uh, on a rainbow with Skittles. No, he's coming back to judge the earth. But it says, behold, he cometh with clouds, with an S at the end. So he's not just coming in one ship, one so-called UFO, which we call the chariots. He's coming back with thousands, all right, which... um. Um, we might, I might as well read that right now in the, uh, it's right here in the book of Jude verse, uh, 14, it says, and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying, behold, the Lord cometh with 10 thousands of his saints. I believe there's another scripture that says the, the, uh, the chariots of the Lord are thousands, even 10 thousands, thousands, roughly paraphrasing. If, uh, if you could find that. But when, when the Lord comes, all right, yeah, every eye is going to see him because there's going to be a, a numerable amount of uh, 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 so-called UFOs, chariots. All right. Um, let me see. That was it on that. Um, you didn't find it? Or we could hold off on that. We could. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Perfect. Psalm 68 and 17. Yeah, this is the King James Version. So I think somebody asked that on your comment board. They said, the chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captive, captivity captive. Thou hast received gift of, gifts of men. Yea, for the rebellious also that the Most High might dwell among them. Now, there you go. So that's how every eye is going to see him. Where do you think you, uh, in the movie Independence Day gets, gets their ideas from? All right, what you see in the, in the movie, you got that big old uh, fathership. All right, we don't call it the mothership. We call it the fathership. You see the big old fathership coming down. They got that from the scriptures, which we're going to read that as well. You know? Um, did you have anything else, Ock? Uh, uh, that was it. All right. Uh, uh, too. We'll save that. Um, grab a second Ezra 13. We'll save that for a, a little later on down in the lesson. I'm gonna grab a Isaiah. All right. And and we got the the 1611 King James, which in it, all right, the same the same Bible your president swears on. All right, swear uh, sworn in on 1611. So uh, and we uh, we have the books of the uh, it's called the Apocrypha. All right. Which uh, the Bible Destruction Group took out. All right. Here you go. You got you got books that are taken out. They have these books, I believe, in the in the Catholic Church, but they took out first and second Ezra. They got the other Bibles in there. But um, um, it says the word of the Lord. Why? Because it matches up with Old and New Testament. All right. Uh, you got that, right? Uh, yeah, start at 1. John, verse 1. And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen unto him. And that's talking about our Lord and Savior. All right, that man wrecked strong with the what? The thousands of heaven. So, hey, when he comes back, he's come. The heavenly father is known as what? The Lord of what? Hosts. When you look up the word host, it goes into armies. All right. The Lord is coming back with the, ar with the armies of his father, which are all the chariots when they come back. The thousands of them. Go ahead. Whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice. Right, because he's coming back to destroy. All right, the the uh the time to repent is now. All right, when once uh repentance that that time is up, guess what? It's judgment time. He's coming back to lay down a judgment. All right, go ahead. John, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. Because what happened the first time? The Lord flooded the earth. The heavenly Father Yahweh. All right, we don't call him God. God is just a title. We don't call them Jehovah. Again, the letter J didn't exist. This is the 1611 edition. There's no letter J's in here, all right? There's there's I's, 
all right? But uh, the letter J didn't come into books till later on, all right? And again, it's their Hebrew, all right? They spoke Hebrew. They have Hebrew names. So the Heavenly Father's true name is Yahweh. all right? He, what did he do? He flooded the earth the first time. It's only saved eight souls. You got to really think about it. He, God's not nobody to be messing around with. Now's the time to get right. Noah was out there prophesying over 100 years, okay? But this time, he's not flooding the earth with water. He's going to flood the earth with fire. All right, go ahead. John, and after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. Right, and those, those are the armies of the world that are ultimately, World War Three is going to be kicked off. All right, but when, when the Lord returns... They're all going to join together to try to fight the Lord, all right? That's that, that, that uh, multitude that's innumerable, all right? They're going to try to fight the Lord when he returns. They're already trying to do it now. Why do you think you got, uh, when Donald Trump is president, he started what? The Space Force. Why do you think you got Elon Musk putting satellites up? Everybody say, those ain't, that's Starlink, Starlink. No, that's not Starlink, all right? Starlink, for one, what they're all, they're linked together, satellites, all right. These ain't satellites. These things are moving on their own free will. Absolutely. When we witnessed the day of Pentecost, what was that? A couple of months ago, we literally seen chariots come out of nowhere, just literally through a, a portal. Hunt thousands of them cross the whole sky. Call us crazy. I don't care. <laughs> All right. Call us. You guys are. What are y'all smoking on? Let me get some of that. Go ahead. The egg. Hey, that's cool. Y'all can think that Man. you ain't offending us. All right, we're fools for the Lord's sake. You can call us crazy. You can call us whatever you want. We know what we seen, and we got the footage. Y'all can say, "Oh, that's a um, uh, what else are they saying? That, that Starlink, that Project Blue Beam." All right, so here it is. We've been out in the streets teaching, and you see chariots upon chariots, which I got more footage to post of of what the chariots of the Lord visiting who the men of Great Millstone GMS. You got. IUIC, you got ISUPK, you got HOI, you got Sakari, you got all these camps. But why, why, why would the government want to waste their time with GMS only? Let's let's get them with Blue Beam. Ha ha ha! They think it's cherry. Let's get them with Starlink. Ha ha! Why 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 is it only with the money of the Lord from GMS that the uh, the Lord is showing these chariots, or or the government want to be messing with us? Right. You, got, right. you got all kind of websites where people spot stuff in the sky and yeah spot different. Glowing object. People have been doing this for hundreds and thousands of years, man. Mm -hmm. it's the, I mean, the government already came out and said that whatever technology it is, it's thousands of years advanced to anything that they have. Yo, even the pilots. Some of them pilots can't even explain it. Uh, go ahead. I'm going to tell these kids to be quiet. <laughs> it said, verse, hey. verse 6, it says, And I beheld and lo, he engraved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. But I would have seen the regional place where up where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And that's talking about the ship. Right? The ship was so big. Right? Like in the, the second Independence Day they just came out with, you know, the ship was basically bigger than the whole earth. So they had to go back and they had to redo the whole thing. Alright? I just hit verse 6. I'm going to read Got it. Got a whole bunch of baby kids in here. I'm going to read it again. It said, verse 6, But I beheld, and lo, he engraved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. Right, so here's the prophet Ezra seeing the return of, of the um, our Savior, Yahweh Shai. I don't know what. He, he called it a mountain. So here it is. Now, now does that make the Bible contradict itself? One scripture says a cloud. The other scripture said... um. <laughs> chariot the other scripture said mountain well you got to understand at that time those times that's how the they described it as they had no they didn't have the term ufo back then right all right another scripture say behold a flying roll mm -hmm. another scripture in ezekiel says a wheel within, within the, the wheel. wheel that's a flying saucer a wheel within the wheel all right and y'all could look it up you know don't be lazy all right it's only your salvation like the brother uh, Capo says in our camp, it's only your salvation. You can look it up if you don't believe it. It's in the book of Ezekiel. All right, uh, continue. Yep, but verse 7, but I would have seen the region or place whereof the hill was graven, 
and I could not. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, and yet durst fight. Wait, so he, now now this is Ezra the prophet seeing a, 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 a so-called UFO, which he described it as a mountain, was so big he couldn't even tell where the, the beginning of it was to the end of it was. Where do you think they got that from the movie Independence Day? Where you see the big old uh, father shit coming in, and it's like, dang, you can't even tell where it starts, where it ends. All right? That's pretty much what he's describing in the scriptures. Okay? That's how big this... When, when the Lord comes, y'all gonna know. Yeah, don't get me wrong. We're not saying the, the ones in the videos were, oh, that's, that's um, the return of the Lord. No, we're not saying that. We're saying that that's the chariots of God showing themselves to the men of the Lord, all right? Um, but um, when, when, the, when the Savior comes, yeah, you're gonna, everybody's gonna know, all right? Because something that big is gonna be seen across the world. All right, go ahead. It's gonna be a global event. Yep. At verse nine, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. Right, so when, when the Lord returns, it's going to be what? You're going to see uh, him uh, laser beaming, wapple zappling people. He's going to be judging people. The cherry's going to be shooting late. Like, like again, going back to uh, Independence Day, when they blew up the White House, how the laser beam shot, and they started blowing up the building downtown shit. That's literally what's going to happen. Where do you think they get this from? Yeah. All right. Um, but it's, it's not going to need to, like in that movie, sit there and charge up. And <laughs> right. Nah. It's not going to have to power up, man. Yeah. You know? Um, and, uh, hey, basically, he's going to get a flawless victory. He, he the Lord is going to come back, and he's, he's going to come back to judge. What was that? I was going to say, what's the one with Tom Cruise? Uh, what they... What they, they come out of the ground. Mm. Uh, but but it's but it's it's the same concept. Okay, I think there's a. You could probably read one more verse. What's the the outcome of that? War of worlds. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yup. The little tripod things that came right. out started zapping people. Yep. Be, other than besides they're going to be coming down from the heavens. Right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, they added to it, but kind of. Verse 11, and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell up with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them up every one, so that upon a sudden and an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. There you go. Okay, so um, we're, we're, we're reading out of the 1611 King James Bible. All right, now we're going to go to uh, the book of Jeremiah 66 and verse 15. This is a prop. No, wait, I, I'm sorry. This is Isaiah 66 and 15. This is a prophecy in the Old Testament, which has not come to pass yet. It says, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So here, we, so here, okay, we read in uh, Acts, he went in the cloud. We read in Psalms that the clouds are the chariots. We read in Revelation that he's going to return in the cloud, which pretty much saying he's going to come back in a chariot. We read in 2 Ezra, the 13th chapter, what? That it was like a mountain he was flying on. That's how big it was. And here in uh, Isaiah 66 and 15, it clearly tells you that um, the, the Lord is going to come with, the, with his chariots. All right. And it says he's going to do what? I'm going to reread it again. Um, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So he's coming back to judge. All right. Now's the time to get right. 16. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. All right, so when Yahweh Shai returns, he ain't coming to plead like, guys, are you going to believe me now? You see, are, I'm the son of God. You believe me now? No, the word plead there means he's going to come back to judge. 
Okay, he's coming back to judge this place. This place is wicked. Just just look at this place. It's wicked. All right, you just ain't no other way how to describe it. Uh, Job 9 and 24 said what? The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. All right. Um, what you got, brother? Um, if not, we can get that. 2 Kings uh, 2 and 11. Guys, 2 Kings 2 and 11. It says, and it went to pass as they went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Right, so you got uh, horses, because uh, in Revelations it says what? He's coming back on a horse. Uh, if you if you can uh, look that one up, I'm not sure exactly where that's at in Revelation. All right, and, it, and uh, Elijah went up into the chariot. All right, which today they'll be like, oh, he went in, he went, he got abducted. He went into a UFO. That's what they will say today, all right? If, if if somebody was to witness that today, Elijah getting beamed up or lifted up into a chariot, an alien came and took him in a UFO. That's what that's what they would describe it as today. Beam me up, Scotty. You know? Yeah. This is Revelation 19 and 11. It said, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And that's talking about the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. All right, he, he came upon the horse, which the horse represents power. All right, when you got a car, what they, how, many, how much horsepower do you have? You know, the horses represent power. All right, it represents might, strength. All right, so when, when the Lord and Savior comes, Yahweh Shai, he's coming with force. He's coming with, a, he's coming with power. All right, he ain't coming back where you're gonna, people are going to see him like, mm, man, who's this guy? Now they're going to be like, oh, snap, they're going to be, they're going to be scared. Like we read in Revelation, the nations are going to wail. At his uh, at at uh, his coming, they're gonna be crying bitterly. All right, it's gonna be it's gonna be a very fear, fearful thing. Yeah. Jump to verse fourteen. Matter of fact, verse twelve. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And the armies which were in heaven. Follow him upon white horses, Ooh. clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So, like the brother saying, man, those horses represent power. It's not they're not literal horses. These men are just describing to you things which they saw thousands of years ago, which they you know put the things that they knew to try to describe the things that they didn't know. Right, like, like the. Um, upon contrary belief, whether you believe it or not, the nuclear missiles are in the Bible. Right. But did the prophet say, damn, they shot a nuclear missile from one end of the earth to another? No, they said they shot an arrow from one. Right. Who's going to shoot an arrow from one end of the earth to the other? Right. That I don't know the strongest dude on the planet earth who can do that. Or, or a, a bow at that that could do that. Because, you know, so they, the, these prophets could only describe what they could at that time, you know? Um, but it's through uh, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, not of our own, but of, hey, of the Lord who's giving us the understanding of these scriptures. All right. Um, we can close out with that wisdom. If you got anything else, we can grab that wisdom of Solomon 5. I'm going to read uh, 2 Kings 6 and 14. Pretty much this was... Um, I think the king, of, the king of Syria came up against Elisha. All right, and they they try to like uh, they try to like hem him up. This is a uh, Second Kings six and fourteen. Though therefore sent he thither horses and chariots, a great host. This is the king of Syria's army, and they came by night and compassed the city about. Cause who was in that city? Uh, Elisha was the prophet. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host, which the host is an army. Come past the city, both with horses and chariots. Now these are talking about little, literal horses and chariots, men's army. And his servant said unto him, At last, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. 
So Alicia was like, hey, don't even worry about that. Like, man, there's more that's with us than with them, you know? Even though the servant is just them two, he's like, what you talking about? It's just us two, you know? Verse um, 17, and Elisha prayed and said, Yahweh, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord, Yahweh, openeth the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountains was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And there you go. So, hey, for some people, the Lord don't even want you to see the chariots. All right. Hey, somebody could literally be looking like, oh, damn, that don't mean you can see it. All right. But um, as far as, um, again, what was that? That, that? that was about a year ago. When all them chariots came, all right, yes, there was over what? There had to have been over 60 witnesses. All right, you can call them balloons. You can call them lasers. You can call them special blue beam. You can call them Starlink. Bro, the government, Esau, they're not going to waste their time and resources showing us. All right, again, you got all these camps. We're Great Millstone. You got ISUBK, IUIC. HOI, Sakari, why, why ain't they being the chariots of the Lord being seen among them? All right, it's only always around the men of the Lord's great millstone. All right, so here it is. It's, it's, it's showing them as horses and chariots, okay? Which, um, again, back then, that's how they described it. That's the best way they can explain it. Today's time, somebody without the understanding would say, a UFO, all right, but us knowing... Uh, we call them uh, IFOs, identified flying objects, because we know that those are the chariots of the Lord. All right, coming, showing themselves to the men, just like they did right here in the ancient times. They showed themselves to Elisha and his servant. All right, it's nothing. The scriptures say there's nothing new under the sun. Okay, so the things that happened in the past are going to happen again. All right. Um, let me see. Is there any more in here? That's it on that. We can close out with that last scripture. Uh, wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. Right. So, hey, the men of the Lord are standing right now in great boldness in the faces of our enemies. All right. All nations had us in captivity. All right. If you read this, if you understand the scripture, all nations had the children of Israel in captivity with understanding the prophecies. The children of Israel can only be the so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. But mind you that we've been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So we're going to look like all the nations. The children of Israel have been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. We're going to look like Bruce Lee. We're going to look like Justin Timberlake. We're going to look like Wesley Snipes. We're going to look like Manny Pacquiao. We're going to look like everybody under the the, the, uh, the heavens because we've been scattered. All right. Um, so the men of the Lord are standing in great boldness. But it says what? Uh, the, the strangeness of their salvation. The Lord is going to come and deliver them into those chariots. All right. They're going to come and take them up. Like it says in Revelation, come out of her, my people. Talking about come out of this place, Babylon, before the destruction. All right. And they, they, uh, they're going to be delivered into those chariots. That's how the Lord is coming back to save his people. All right. And it's going to, it's going to be like it says in, uh, uh, Jeremiah 16, it's going to, y'all ain't going to be talking about how the, how would deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. It's going to be how he delivered them out of the land of the North, which is here in America, AKA Babylon and all the lands where he scattered us. That's it's going to be a great deliverance. Keep on reading in there. There's more. Says, yep, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How was he numbered among the children of the Most High and his lot is among the saints? Right, so so these heathen nations gonna be like, How are these uh, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans? How are they the children of God? What? You know, they're going to be amazed at our, uh, our salvation. Okay. And the Lord is not coming back for everybody. All right. He's only coming back for the elect of his people. One third. Okay. And that's it. 
Everybody else is going to get judged. All right, you had any closing statements? Oh, man, it's just, look, there's too much evidence. There's too much stuff right in front of your face, man. You either believe or you don't. As a matter of fact, grab Romans, the third chapter. That's the perfect. You might as well close with that. Yeah. Romans 3 and 3. Yeah, Romans. And again, we got more We got more footage. Y'all can keep on uh, scoffing, saying, y'all, let me smoke some of that, man. Whatever it is y'all got, let me smoke. Y'all can keep on saying that. That's cool. You can call us false prophets. You can uh, call us bums. Go get a job. You, you, you can say all of that. Hey, they did the same thing to the men of the Lord in the ancient time. All right, you think you think the Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai um, uh, was love? No, nah, they his own people put him to death. Our own people freaking gave him up. Yeah, the wicked of our people. The yeah, the wicked of our people gave him up. So they're gonna do the same thing to us. Guess what? We don't care. Yeah. Go ahead, read that. Romans three and three. For what if some did not believe? Mm -hmm. Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Heaven, Most High forbid. Yeah, mm -hmm. let the most high be true, but every man a liar. So if you don't believe, that don't that just because you don't believe, it's not gonna change what's gonna uh roll out in prophecy. Mm -hmm. That's like you telling somebody the sky is brown, you know, or it's blue, but they're like, no, it's brown, it's brown, it's brown. Does it change the fact that the sky is really brown? No, mm -hmm. you know, the, it doesn't matter if you don't believe or not. You uh yeah, you uh the dress was orange and yellow, ass niggas. Man. The dress <laughs> oh, that clear. one picture? Yeah, yeah, the dress was clearly kind. Right. It's like gold and black and blue yeah. and so What up, man? Yeah, anyway, it don't matter if you don't believe or not. The things that are written are going to play out accordingly. All right? And it also says, let every man be true. Uh, I'm not, I'm, forgive me. Slip of the speech. It says, let God be true and every man a liar. Mm -hmm. All right? How do you let God be true? By going off of his word. All right, we're not going off of our own word. We're going off of what thus saith the Bible. The same Bible, I'm going to quote more, as laying on your granny's uh, uh, coffee table collecting dust that nobody reads. Mm -hmm. All right? Everybody want to jump on the comment board. The Bible says, the without even posting no scripture. Mm -hmm. Come on now. All right, well, you know, with that, again, we got more footage coming from other angles, different accounts. You can say Starlink and Bluebeam all you want. We don't care. <laughs> Just say whatever you want. They're the chariots of the Lord, whether you believe it or not. Right. Um, other than that, Lord willing, all right, Yahweh Ratzizah, all right, which means Lord willing in Hebrew. This was an edifying lesson. So next time we're going to give all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Akar Kodash, all right. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect pushing this word in truth and in sincerity. All right, to the Israelite foreigners scattered throughout the four corners of the earth who may look like the heathen nation and to the very few sisters that listen and learn to you. Shalom. I don't even know how to turn this live off. Let me see. I think it's this button.